because we did draft our fantasy teams for 2024 in NASCAR. So um, uh, I will share that with everybody on, because I am going to be doing, obviously I'm going to be doing the NASCAR race previews, including the Daytona 500. So that'll be available uh, in uh, on this week on this channel. And then I'll update the fantasy lineups for everybody so you can see exactly who we chose and so forth. But I guess quickly, what did you guys think about your fantasy teams? Uh, Eric? Pleasantly surprised. I Same kind of anchors that I have with, you know, Hamlin and Logano that <laughs> I typically take. But, uh, uh, no, I, I, I'm, I'm okay with it. We'll see when we get going. It's just hard to tell and with this year with Toyota and Ford having different body styles of, what is that going to look like? Is that going to take Chevy's performance down? Is it going to elevate theirs? Is it going to do nothing? And it looks the same. It, so I tempering my expectations until, I mean, I guess probably a couple months in because we got a couple super speedways to start. So we'll see. We'll see how much of a factor these body styles are and what it does for competition. All right. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just I've, I've the uh, document that I use, just simple, no frills. So you can take a look at what our teams look like. There's Eric's team uh, in alphabetical order, of course. And uh, this is CJ's team in alphabetical order. Uh, and then this is my team. Uh, same way all the way through. Uh, let me see. Do I have I think? Yeah, here is the uh, draft order. So I'll ask you, CJ. Uh, take a look at the draft order. You kick things off with Kyle Larson. Uh, and then you had to wait with the snake format to get to Byron with pick number six overall. Uh, so what did you think? What were the the, the, uh, the highs and lows of your draft? Well, I don't like picking first and last. I'll put it that way. There are too many picks in between. It makes it really challenging. I wanted to get uh, Joey Logano this year for as often as Eric talks about Logano in even years. Yep. I wanted to pick him. Ah. Unfortunately, that didn't turn out, but I'm relatively happy with what I got. Um, I think there are a couple names. I, I did go with a couple dark horses that are out there that I think are poised to have some pretty good years uh, or good season this year in 2024. Like Eric said, though, I mean, with two new body styles out of three manufacturers, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out this season. Cautiously optimistic as to where we stand right now. Okay, so, yeah, because by the way, that's really what hurt you last year on fantasy was the the, the bottom ha tier of your uh, of your team. Uh, it didn't get a lot there. So right now you're going with Eric Jones. Uh, you got Barry and Hemrick. So Hamrick and Barry are the wild cards, really, at this point right. in time. Um, why did you Why did you go with those particular drivers? So watching Josh Barry step up into the Cup season last year, uh, or the Cup series last year, as a substitute role for multiple teams, showed he was really versatile. He did really well in the number nine machine. He's stepping into a former champions car, former championship winning teams car, and I know that team has had their struggles. Tony Stewart's talked about that openly in the offseason, but they're going to make things better. And Josh Berry is the type of driver that can make that happen uh, or, or take advantage of that when it does happen. So I, I feel pretty good about him. As far as Daniel Hamrick, you know, not a lot of wins for him, but yet he got his championship, right? And he's got a lot more experience. And I think he's coming back to the series with a new perspective, a new approach. Uh, we'll see if that pays off. Obviously, a big wild card for him. He's going to be one I'm going to be watching very closely over the first couple of races, though, just to see how he gets his feet underneath him. All right. And then, Eric, uh, I noticed you have a couple of drivers that you're hoping will have comeback seasons uh, you, uh, later in the draft, and that includes Bowman and Briscoe. Yep. Where's yeah. Uh, Bowman was – I'm kind of going on – he just needed that fresh start. I mean, remember, he was leading the points before that energy injury. Uh, and I, I, if he could pick that back up, I think that injury bothered him more than he let on as the season went on. Those races he missed um, were a factor of learning this this car and this team because he had a new crew chief too last year. So I just figured with, I mean, you're with Hendrick Motorsports. You can't miss the playoffs two years in a row. That's just not, not going to be a good thing. So, I feel like they're good enough to make a playoff. I mean, it is a 48 team, so let's see if that helps. And then with Briscoe, I've just taken a flyer on Stuart Haas, is like CJ said, Tony. Tony's not happy with the with the way they felt. Um, I think they were reeling, and I'm not overly 
optimistic they're going to come out of it. But if they are, Briscoe is the only one on the team that's won a race. Um, and it's crazy. Wow. So uh, we'll see because with them, they have to start fast, right? I mean, because there's no deal with Ford past this season. And I – I could see it kind of hurting them if they get to a point where they just look like they did last year. They could, there's rumors they could scale back. And I think that pressure, Tony's hands are, he's getting a little more involved because he doesn't want to go backwards. So we'll see. Um, okay. So yeah, we'll see what he does. All right. Now let's, uh, before we get to predictions, and then we're going to give our, our final four predictions, our champion and our sleeper. And we're going to take a look at the championship pods, of course. Um, what, what would you, what would you guys consider, uh, Eric, what would you consider to be, cause you guys t- touched about it, uh, touched up on it just a little bit, uh, the big story heading into this season, whether it's car, uh, teams, rules, schedule, what, what would be the, for the fans out there, what do they need to know? I'd say for me, it is the car. Um, just because it, we'll see if it pans out. I mean, Chevy's dominated lately. I mean, DJ's got a great team with, with Larson and Byron because they led the series and wins and last led last year. And but there's Chevrolet, they both made the final four. Does this new car and I don't I shouldn't say new car, new body style, it's the same car, just new body style for Ford and Toyota, does that close into that gap at all? Does that take last led and wins away from Chevrolet and give maybe more an advantage to those two camps? All right, so explain so, that Ford and Toyota, they change their body styles to what? To catch up to try to get more speed the way they've noticed out of Chevrolet. Yes. And an an example would be Toyota's again. So we get going, nobody truly knows, but for Daytona, especially super speedway, their front end is a little more kind of like this and where Fords are more flush. So it's easier for a Ford to draft and push because they lock and go forward. Toyota's like this, you hit an uneven, surface it's going to spin them out that's why we saw toyota struggle a bit so with that new rounded nose uh they think it's going to provide a lot of not only downforce but it's also going to help them cut through the air which means more speed too so they're hoping both sides from what i've heard toyota's may have the car to beat this year across all tracks but ford they've been down the last two years right but they also won the championship so i'm just curious how that's going to look to their performance does it change at other tracks on the season, but they take a dip at a place somewhat like Phoenix where they've been good there. And that's why they've won the championship the last two years. True. So that's where I'm curious to yeah. that, how much is that going to change things? Um, Chevy, now granted, they're going to have a decision to make in a couple of years because they're phasing out the Camaro and that's what they've been running. Do they going to make, are they going to change brands? Uh, but they want to use for their next gen car in a couple of years. Um, do they change anything on that body style? Okay. So that's kind of an underrated thing that I think to me I'm going to have my eye on is what does that look like uh, as far as the season goes on. And we're not going to get an early read because, like I said, we got two super speedways in a row, which that sure. might, we might read on super speedways because Ford's been so dominant at those tracks. Um, but we got Phoenix early. We got Vegas. So this is going to tell a lot of how much – that's really helped them. So I've got my eye on that early on. And the same thing with the road courses, of course, right? Because there was a lot of, even though some of the teams improved last year, um, that's also, is that part of the new design? Or, mm-hmm. or You change everything. Yeah, it, it's going to change. That, that's why it's going to be hard to take some of the past historical stuff with some of these guys. Early, we're going to have to just rely on what they've done because we don't know what the car's going to look like. Yeah. But if that car's improved, then these recent finishes with this next gen maybe aren't indicative of what this, they can do with this car because maybe the car held it back. Because remember, Toyotas haven't done much on road courses at all. Tyler Reddick came in last year in one yes. race, yes. but they really overall weren't much factored. Maybe this changes things. So it could change a lot. I mean, because if they're taking finishing spots up front, it's taking spots for Chevrolet was. And Chevrolet hasn't had a counter yet because they too don't know what it's going to look like. Okay. So interesting little storyline i think yeah a lot to talk about no question and we'll uh, try to update everybody on the weekly show with as much of that type of information that we can to just remind everybody as we're as we're going along uh that this is this is new for toyota and ford and how does that work and so forth and so on um so yeah it's going to take a while like you said uh before we really have a good idea of past performance tracks that uh we'll update everybody on no question about it and that's why you want to stay here throughout the season uh, and also don't forget to subscribe 
and share the video and like the video because that's going to make us grow as quick as possible and that's going to help everybody out there as motorsports fans okay so let's get right to it i'm going to pop up the uh the the draft uh sharks uh, the draft uh, kings um board here so let's start of course with nascar futures and look lo and behold who is the favorite to win the championship uh mr ryan blaney so i think it, a, <laughs> what was that i think he's finally getting his due diligence he i mean he was last year i'm kept talking what's the guy got to do to get to become a favorite he was always like 14 to 1 16 to 1 and i'll take his one championship and now it's almost two overkill so because i i'm not now by the way i didn't get you off the air i didn't uh we, we, we went over proposed changes for futures. Did, are you guys going to be doing futures this year the way that we proposed it, or are you staying away from futures this year? Did you see the I'm proposed in. changes? I'm in. Yeah, I'm staying. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> the proposed yeah. changes are that, and this is going to make it a lot easier for us, and it's really more like the average fan anyway, because you only have so much money that you're going to spend on futures a year. So we say, all right, what if we spend $1,000 in our pot for futures? You could spend that money any way you like with a minimum bet of a hundred dollars maximum obviously a thousand and then you can get anywhere from 10 bets to one all season so it's so that's it once you run out of money you're out so for instance ryan blaney why on earth would any of us unless you just think he's the champion you put all thousand dollars on him but that would be silly you're gonna stay away from this shorter odds guys early on and you're gonna kind of wait i hope maybe you get some better odds which is what i'm gonna do I don't know what you guys are going to do. So taking a look at the odds and then um, we'll we'll get into our, our, our picks and, and kind of talk about the futures too. But um, let's go with your picks. CJ, give me your top four for Phoenix this year. Larson, Byron, Hamlin, Logano. Oh, veterans. Except for Byron. Byron's looking to break through. So Byron and, of course, Hamlin still hasn't won a championship. All right. And uh, let's go with your championship pick. I'm going to go William Byron this year. Excellent. New champion. And give me your sleeper. So you can see by the odds, the sleepers are going to have to be anybody starting with Kyle Busch there at 14 to 1. So anybody from Kyle Busch on... Who would be your sleeper? It does not necessarily have to be championship sleeper. It could also just be, hey, I got, I really think uh, Daniel Suarez might be a Final Four guy, so I'm, I, so that would be considered a sleeper. So, who is your official sleeper for the year? So, my official sleeper for the year actually is going to end up being Chris Busher. Um, he had a couple of wins uh, last year, I think, with Keselowski and the focus that that organization has got to be able to get them to where they were last year. Both of them making the playoffs. Keselowski didn't win. Busher got it, several wins. I think that team is poised for another breakthrough, a return to former glory. So I'm going to go with Chris Busher being the young gun in that stable. All right. Now, let's. Uh, by the way, we're going to say goodbye to Eric in about 15 minutes. CG and I will close out the show talking about F1. So stay tuned for that. Uh, next up now, and by the way, Busher, you did put your money where your mouth was because we sh I should have known you were going to take Busher because you took Busher maybe a little early in your fantasy team. <laughs> so that was a tip off that you're yep. all in on Busher this year. You also have Kislowski. Yep. I, well, Kislowski was. He wasn't my top choice. Uh, as I said, you know, Logano went early with the even number to Eric, uh, even number year. There were a couple that you guys chose ahead of me. That first pick in that snake draft format is just tough. Uh, so Keselowski at that point wasn't somebody I planned on, but at the time he was the best available. Okay. Eric, give us your top four, final four. Well, I was going to go all in on the Logano thing because I kept saying it, but until we <laughs> see Ford, so I I'll win at my fantasy team, but for right now, I'm going to say Larson, uh, Hamlin. I'm going to say Reddick, just because Toyota, if they say Toyota is going to be as good as they say they are, I'm going to trust Reddick. And my other one is, so hold on, who do, I just want to make sure I don't say sorry, Larson, Hamlin, Reddick, yep, yep. and Chastain. I think 
I think some reason Chastain is going to get there. I think Chastain will beat out Logano for that spot. Now, granted, this, the even number year Logano gets there, but it may sound stupid. I've been living by that motto for years, not putting him there, but I'll stick with it. With my sleeper, uh, I, I, I'm going to go with – By the CJ way, Boyle. based on – just so you know, based on the way we have it here, uh, Reddick and Chastain do qualify as sleepers, or you have somebody else. I'm going to go a little bit longer because I think he's going to make a run. And I'm CJ's boy last year, Ty Gibbs. I think Ty Gibbs is poised to – I think he'll win multiple times this year. I mean, we saw in the clash. I mean, he had a chance to win that race. Um, I just think, especially the David Wilson with Toyota said that he expects all four Gibbs guys to make the playoffs, all four to win races. Ty's got a hell of a talent. Last year, being a rookie, you know, he lost his uncle and his dad recently. I just think it was a lot to take on. And he won rookie of the year and almost made the playoffs on points. So I really think um, – Ty's going to have a year. I, I could see him getting to the second round, maybe round of eight, if depending on how he does in the track in his Toyota. But if Toyota's going to take that big leap forward, I think I think Ty goes with it. So um, that's why I go a little bit of a longer shot because what was it? Plus 20, yeah, plus 2,500 right now to win a championship. I'm not going that far yet, but I think he can make a run. Yeah, well, I have him on my fantasy team. So I believe uh, in Gibbs, uh, just like you said. And I also believe in Chastain. Because he's actually going to be my championship sleeper. So he's going to be my main sleeper at, because I think he could win the championship. Uh, so I'm right there with Chastain. I'm going to go Bell, Byron, and Elliot. So I think uh, Elliot is somebody that uh, you, you just get, the, I just get the feeling that he's going to uh, have a little bit of a redemption this year because he, he really needs to. So, yeah, yeah. We'll see if that happens, but um, I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, Chastain was my, I think he's my championship pick right now. I mean, look, he won Phoenix last year. And then the year before, what, he's second, third, third. Um, and second what happened to Blaney last year, the year before, he would have yep. won and ended yep. up winning the championship. Yep. So I'm just going strictly based off Phoenix of why I think he's okay. just one of those, like, if he was in that championship four, he would have won. I think track house is what they've done in this short of time. Now you're giving him another year. Um, so okay. I expect him to be well. 